Standard essential patterns, SEPs. Is EU interventionism the solution to ensure licensing negotiations on France terms? Standard essential patents, despite only representing 2% of the total population of patents currently in force, are critical to the development of international standards relating to technologies such as 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, computer, audiovisual, uh, in the Internet of Things ecosystem. Yet, standard essential patent licensing is archaic, often requiring lengthy, draining court litigation to agree terms of fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory front use between SEP holders and SEP implementers. Of course, small and medium enterprises, which increasingly implement standards based on SEPs, standard essential patents, in the Internet of Things ecosystem are priced out and cannot negotiate front terms with cash-rich SEP holders. I mean, think about all the royalties the SEP owners are currently collecting right and left from licensees. The state of affairs stifles innovation and breaches competition and antitrust law. So the European Commission took the matter into its own hands and passed its proposal on standards essential patents in April 2023, which was then adopted by the European Parliament in February 2024, proposing revolutionary yet state-controlled sweeping reforms such as setting up a competence center at the EU IPO tasked with administering a SEPs registry and database, forcing SEP owners to register their SEPs in such EU IPO's competence center, and mandating the EU IPO with carrying out essentiality checks and setting front criteria, the proposed regulation is bold. So, how much market freedom and contractual freedom are SEP stakeholders prepared to collectively sacrifice in order to in increase transparency regarding SEP ownership and front royalties, as well as agency during negotiations of SEP licensing on front terms. Let's start with the basics. What are standard essential patents, SEPs? Well, first, let's have a look at what is a patent, right? First things first. Patents are governmentally awarded monopoly rights over new inventions that are industrially applicable. Products or processes may be patented, but irrespective of the form of a patent, the product or process must satisfy the substantive criteria of the United Kingdom Patent Act 1977. Of course, this relates to UK patents. There are some restrictions as to the subject matter. There must be an invention, but not as such invention or non-patentable inventions. And the novelty must be present, which is the second criteria for UK patents. An inventive steps must be present for the criteria, and the invention must be capable of industrial application. The same criteria exist under French law pursuant to the French Intellectual Property Code, it provides that are patentable in all technological domains, new inventions implying an inventive activity and susceptible of industrial application. To these three positive conditions, to the patentability of an intellectual asset, i.e. the industrial character, the novelty and the inventive activity, a fourth condition must be added for French patents, which is the sufficiency of a description since the non-compliance with this fourth condition triggers the invalidity of a patent title, which is the same sanction than in case of non-compliance with the three previously mentioned fundamental patentability criteria. At the European level, the 1973 Munich Convention called the European Patent Convention established a uniform patenting system for all countries signatory to the European Patent Convention. And that includes as signatories, the UK and France, because they joined the EPC, the European Patent Convention, in 1977. In addition to providing a legal framework for the granting of European patents via a single 
harmonized procedure before the Munich headquartered European Patent Office. The European Patent Convention provides that European patents should be granted for any inventions in all fields of technology, provided that they are new, involve an inventive step and are susceptible of industrial application. In the UK, a patent lasts five years, renewable every year after the first five years period, up to a maximum of 20 years. In France, however, a French patent can only be renewed for a maximum term of 20 years, so the same thing than in the UK, but it is renewable each year at the anniversary date of a patent application, provided that some annual renewal fees are paid. At the European level, the same system than the um, French system applies, which is that it's got a maximum term of 20 years, the European patent, but it also needs to be renewed each year by the payment of annual renewal fees. And what's going on with this rise and rise of standard essential patents? A standard essential patent, a SEP, is a patent that protects technology which is in essential to implementing a technical standard. A technical standard is an agreed or established technical description. It is also referred to as a standard, a technical interoperability standard. These descriptions can cover ideas, products, services, or ways of doing things and make sure different technologies can interact and work together. For example, mobile phones, wireless connectivity, navigation systems in cars, and smart meters also use technical standards. For example, mobile phones, wireless connectivity, navigation systems in cars and smart meters all use technical standards. Technical standards are usually produced by standard development organizations SDOs, such as the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, very famous ISO, the International Electronical Commission, the IEC, and the International Telecommunication Union, the ITU, established for the purpose of creating standards with inputs from industry and technical experts. Trade bodies, government organizations, and similar entities can also create technical standards. For example, regional standards bodies include the European Committee for Standardization, or CERN, as an abbreviation, the European Committee for Electrotechnical Standardization, CINELEC, the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, ETSI, the Institute for Reference Materials and Measurements, IRMM, in Europe, and the Pan American Standards Commission, COPANT, the African Organization for Standardization, ARSO, and the Arabic Industrial Development and Mining Organization, AIDMO. Once a technical standard has been agreed, manufacturers are required to make their products standard compliant. In some cases, these standards require the use of specific technologies protected by patents. A patent that protects technology, which is essential to implementing a standard, is known as a standard essential patent, a SEP. Without using the methods or devices protected by technical standards and SEPs, it is difficult for a manufacturer or an implementer of a standard as is often said in this sort of jargon in the industry. So it is difficult for a manufacturer to create standard compliant products such as smartphones or tablets without using the methods or devices protected by technical standards and SEPs. Intellectual property offices such as the UK IPO are looking at SEPs because not only are these offices responsible for granting patents, including standard essential patents, those patents that end up being declared essential for a to a technical standard, but they also want to work hand in hand with their respective governments to foster an intellectual property framework which enables creativity and incentivize innovation to become or remain global leaders of innovation. So patent holders are incentivized to declare their patents as essential to a technical standard. 
in order to gain access to the market and generate royalties. This could provide significant power to the SEP owner and to balance this, these SEP holders are obligated to offer their standard essential patents on fair, reasonable and non-discriminatory, i.e. front licensing terms. So what is fair, reasonable and non-discriminatory? What is FRAND? If a patent is declared essential to a standard, i.e. it is a standard essential patent, the SEP owner agrees that the patent be subject to the FRAND declaration, i.e. that licenses to the standard essential patent will be granted on a fair, reasonable and non-discriminatory basis. These front terms denote a voluntary licensing commitment that standard development organizations, the SDOs that I previously mentioned, often request from the owner of an intellectual property right, usually a patent, that is, or may become essential to practicing a technical standard. So these front terms denote a voluntary licensing commitment that standard development organizations that I've mentioned before often request from the owner of an intellectual property right, usually a patent that is, or may become essential to practicing a technical standard. In other words, a front commitment is a voluntary agreement between the standard development organization and the SEP owner, because a patent under most countries' legal regimes grants its owner an exclusive right to exclude others from making, using, selling, or importing the invention, standard development organization generally must obtain permission from the patent holder to include the patented technology in its standard. So the standard development organization will often request that the patent holder clarify the willingness to license its SEPs on front terms. If the patent holder refuses upon request to license the patent that has become essential to a standard, then the standard development organization must exclude that technology. Viewed in this light, the front commitment serves to harmonize the private interests of set owners and the public interests of standard development organizations. However, various judiciary courts have found that in appropriate circumstances, the implementer of a standard, i.e. a firm or an entity that uses a standard to render a service or manufacture a product, is also an intended third party beneficiary of a friend agreement and as such is entitled to certain rights conferred by that friend agreement. Why are friend terms so contentious? Let's have a look at anti-suit injunctions, ASI. In the case of standard essential patents, the first issue that confronts the patent holder and the company implementing the, the SEP is whether a license has been asked, offered, and or granted on front terms and how the license fee should be determined. The Judiciary Court, tasked with Resolving such a dispute will often deal with multinational companies with worldwide operations and a worldwide interest in the determination of front terms and the license fee, not only in the country where the relevant court is located, but also worldwide. Therefore, the court may determine license fees on front terms limited to the country in which it is located and the patents enforceable there, or it may determine license fees on front terms applicable worldwide between the parties. In such cases, the common view of the courts in Europe and the United States is that since front disputes are essentially contractual disputes, a global rate for the entire patent portfolio licensed under the new contract in question can be determined by a single court. In 2008, in the Unwired Planet versus UI case, the UK Supreme Court 
held that it had jurisdiction to determine the terms of a global friend license agreement between the parties, covering not only the SEP holders' UK patents, but also foreign patents valid in other countries covered by friend commitments. Similar judgments regularly continue to be issued by China's, the UK, such as the Interdigital versus Lenovo judgment handed down in March 2023, and the Optis versus Apple judgment handed down in February 2024. So regular, uh, uh, I mean, similar judgments regularly continue to be issued by China, the UK, and US courts alike where such courts have decided that they have jurisdiction to determine global front terms and conditions in specific cases, even without the consent of both parties, which may have an impact on the European Union industry. However, the fact that the court of a certain country determines the license terms that apply globally for the parties has led to the operation of different legal mechanisms. Indeed, in such disputes, while a dispute regarding the license and the front terms is pending before a court in one country, the patent holder may file an infringement action in another country claiming infringement of the same patents. And while the parties have not yet resolved the ongoing litigation over a license fee on front terms, a preliminary injunction grounding on patent infringement may be granted by a court in another country. The legal mechanism that has started to be used for such situations is the anti-suit injunction, ASI, which we hear of frequently, especially in decisions of European and US courts. The ASI, the anti-suit injunction, prevents the patent owner from filing a lawsuit in foreign countries or enforcing the preliminary injunctions granted by foreign courts in favor of a patent holder, pending the outcome of a litigation in the court in charge of determining the license under front terms in first place. The first notable anti-suit injunction decision in a case concerning the determination of a license fee on front terms was handed down by the US District Court for the State of Washington in Microsoft versus Motorola in 2012. Microsoft alleged that Motorola breached its commitment to offer Microsoft a license on front terms. While this case was pending, Motorola filed a patent infringement lawsuit against Microsoft in Germany. German court upheld the patent infringement claim and enjoined Microsoft from selling the infringing products in Germany. In response to the German court's judgment, Microsoft applied to the US court just before the judgment was enforced and sought an anti-suit injunction decision to prevent Motorola from enforcing the judgment in Germany. The US court granted the anti-suit injunction to Microsoft, which prevented Motorola from filing a lawsuit that would enforce the judicial decision it obtained against Microsoft in Germany for patent infringement. See how anti-suit injunctions are important while uh, the front terms are being defined by the courts where it's somewhere else. Crucially, anti-suit injunction judgments are in personam i.e. they bind the parties, not the courts. In the above mentioned, previously mentioned example, the US court had issued an anti-suit injunction that binds Motorola and has the power to impose sanctions on it within the authorization and jurisdiction of the USA in case of non-compliance. In addition to this territorial limitation of anti-suit injunctions, judgments, the parties litigating in the court of another country may request the court deciding a front case involving a global front rate 
to enjoin the filing or execution of its anti-suit injunction, i.e. by obtaining an anti-suit anti injunction, AASI. Therefore, the extraterritorial effects of both anti-suit injunctions and anti-anti-suit injunctions may unduly impede court proceedings. While anti-suit injunctions and anti-anti-suit injunctions may in certain cases legitimately protect the interests that sovereign states have in undisturbed court proceedings, self-restraint should be exercised because each anti-suit injunction or anti-anti-suit injunction contains the risk of escalation. There is rising awareness among policymakers that it is high time to implement internationally binding rules which ease these conflicts. So the existing situation is a combination of uncertainty and high transaction costs, according in particular to the European Union. There are no specific EU or national rules on standard essential patents. And so far, they have only been subject to competition law limitations. Meanwhile, market dynamics are changing. Standards based on SEPs traditionally used by producers or telecommunications equipment, mobile phones, computers, tablets, and TV sets are increasingly implemented by small and medium-sized enterprises active in the Internet of Things ecosystem. As a result, standard essential patents licensing is now more strongly oriented towards the growing Internet of Things market, including automotive, smart energy, so smart meters and smart grids, payment terminals, tracking devices, drones, medical devices, wireless charging stations, and other products. Although standard essential patents represent only approximately 2% of the population of the patents that are currently in force, standard essential patents licensing is increasingly crucial for those industries, such as communication, computer technology, and audiovisual, in which technical standards have become ubiquitous. In addition, while cross-licensing is traditionally done by companies, i.e. companies are licensing their standard essential patents to each other, in recent times, pure standard essential patent owners and pure standard essential patent users have been entering the market at increasing rates. Indeed, some companies are incorporating standards into their products even without owning the standard essential patents covering such standards, and others are focusing on licensing the standard essential patents without making products incorporating such standards. Within the EU, standard essential patents licensing and front determination have been governed by rules and procedures developed in EU case law, including the Samsung, Motorola, and UA versus ZT cases, and in the recently revised European Commission guidelines on horizontal agreements. However, in its 2020 Intellectual Property Action Plan, the European Commission highlighted the existing dispute and litigation issues surrounding the licensing of SEPs, which is often a cumbersome and costly exercise for both patent holders and technology implementers, especially cash poor SMEs, small and medium enterprises. Thus, the European Commission announced that it considered reforms to further clarify and improve a framework governing the declaration, licensing, and enforcement of standard essential patents. In addition, the Standard Essential Patents Expert Group, set up by the European Commission in 2021, found that some key policy questions, such as how to bring greater clarity to the Standard Essential Patent landscape and how to develop front terms and conditions, need thorough examination. Against this background and following multiple public consultations in 2022, the European Commission highlighted in its 2023 impact assessment 
that the overarching problem, a combination of uncertainty and high transaction costs, affects differently the behavior of standard essential patent owners and standard essential patent implementers, users. Standard essential patent holders, on the one hand, in particular those who pursue bilateral licensing, face two main challenges, lengthy negotiations prior to obtaining a standard essential patent and a costly standard essential patent licensing process. Implementers, on the other hand, account a great uncertainty and prospects of much higher than anticipated costs associated with the use of standards, potentially discouraging the implementation of these new technologies. According to the European Commission, there are a number of main drivers of the above problems, such as there is insufficient transparency regarding standard essential patent ownership, who owns the patents. Furthermore, it is not certain that all patents sought to be licensed are really necessary for implementing a standard. Essentiality is a, an issue. There is a lack of information about front royalties, i.e. SEP implementers with little or no expertise or resources find it impossible to assess the reasonableness of a standard essential patent holder's royalty demand. And proceedings before national courts are time and cost intensive. They are not adapted to front determination. The European Commission believes that the above mentioned issues have a strong impact on the market. First, existing standard essential patent owners face more price pressure and need to adapt their licensing model to the competition that new contributors, particularly Asian companies, bring to the standardization process. Second, standard essential patent licensing in the Internet of Things market may prove difficult and expensive as Internet of Things industries are not familiar with the principles of SEP negotiations and front determination. In addition, the Commission points to different approaches taken by EU national courts and also UK courts and concludes that it is difficult for them to handle standard essential patent related cases and make detailed and consistent front determinations given the lack of transparency and the complexity of the issues at stake, for example, the essentiality checks. As a result, both standard essential patent owners and implementers are likely to experience the following problem, a loss of incentives to innovate, impaired sustainable competitiveness and impaired supply chain security. What is the proposed standard essential patent regulation from the European Commission? On the 27th of April 2023, the European Commission published its proposal for a regulation on standard essential patents. The proposed regulation aims to facilitate standard essential patent licensing by increasing transparency about standard essential patents, reducing information asymmetries between SEP holders and SEP implementers, and facilitating the agreement on front licenses. It would have a harmonizing effect within the EU and consist of three main components. Setting up a competence center at the EU Intellectual Property Office, the EU IPO, tasked with administering a SEPs registry and database where standard essential patent owners would have to register their SEPs on which the EU IPO would carry out essentiality checks and set front criteria. The goal is that this will allow SEP implementers to better understand the standard essential patent landscape, possibly before putting relevant products on the market. The second goal is setting up a procedure to determine aggregate royalties for use of a given standard. Standard essential patent owners would have an option to notify a proposed maximum total royalty covering of SEPs holders for a given standard. 
while step owners and implementers may request a third party to make a non-binding recommendation as to the total royalty rate. It is hoped that this would create additional transparency and facilitate business planning. And the third main component is setting up a procedure to determine front conditions. An expert-led out-of-court front determination that would be mandatory in the sense that one party could unilaterally impose it on the other, but non-binding in terms of its outcome. This process, which would be administered by a panel of third-party conciliators, would last for a maximum of nine months. During this procedure, but not thereafter, anti-suit injunctions are to be off the table in the EU, which it is hoped will facilitate front negotiations. An important innovation of this process is that, unlike a typical court-based front determination, it can be imposed by the implementer on the SEP owner. End of a proposed EU regulation, SMEs are exempt from essentiality checks. Whenever small and medium enterprises are standard essential patent owners, they may request a limit to the territorial scope of the front determination of ASEPs. Furthermore, all other SEPs holders are encouraged to offer more favorable front terms and conditions to SMEs and to consider discounts or royalty-free licensing for low sales volumes irrespective of the implementer's size. Finally, the EU Competence Centre would also provide training, support and general advice on standard essential patents to small and medium enterprises and raise awareness of SEP licensing. On the 28th of February 2024, the proposed regulation was approved by a large majority at the European Parliament. While the proposed regulation does not contain any potentially binding rules on the level of a value chain at which licensing should take place, the European Parliament added in what would be a non-binding interpretative recital, a statement that a front license should be available to any party seeking one, irrespective of a position of a potential licensee in the respective value chain. Why not? For the proposed regulation to become law, it still needs to be negotiated and approved by the 27 EU member states who will vote on a qualified majority basis rather than on a unanimity basis. Therefore, potentially significant modifications to the proposed EU regulation may still take place. As there is no fixed timetable for those discussions, the Initiative may advance swiftly if there is broad consensus among EU member states. But the proposed regulation is controversial and will probably be subject to intense debate before EU member states, which would delay the adoption process. While small and medium enterprises and SEP implementers support the proposed EU regulation and its proposed measures to address the lack of transparency and fairness in standard essential patent licensing, many SEP owners are up in arms about such EU intervention in the SEP slash brand ecosystem by means of binding legislation, which they find illegitimate. For example, Ericsson warns that the proposed EU regulation departs from the inclusive consensus-driven approach by imposing different new and untested procedures and could result in regional fragmentation as regards standards. Nokia believes that the proposed EU regulation is flawed and would result in a lack of predictability and in reducing SEP royalties thus ultimately proving detrimental to EU leadership in 5G and 6G. Even some academics have expressed criticism, with some of them calling the proposed EU regulation unnecessary, disproportionate, likely to harm both EU innovators and the EU's technology leadership on the global age. 
On the other hand, other experts welcome the proposed EU regulation, which in their view would significantly increase transparency in licensing negotiations. They rebut the argument that it would reduce innovation and that the EU IPO is not up to the tasks for which it has been designated. It seems to us at CRIFOVI that the proposed EU regulation is a delicate balancing act between the wants of the SEP owners and the needs of SEP implementers, and in particular, small and medium enterprises, with a view of boosting innovation and access to essential patented technologies without incurring draining litigation fees. Like the Digital Markets Act and the Digital Services Act, the EU proposed regulation, if it is adopted, would have a significant ripple effect around the world, even in China, the UK and the USA. Substantially impacting how front terms are negotiated and agreed between stakeholders worldwide, even when such stakeholders are the little guy. Thank you so much for listening to our live webinar on standard essential patents. It's been a pleasure and I will be back in touch with you very soon. Don't hesitate to like and follow our content on the social media sites, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Bye for now.